All right, so what's up, beautiful people? It's your boy, Micah. Today, we got Tans on. We're going to be talking about non-binary, trans-masculine individuals. I'm not a non-binary person myself, so I figure I'm not going to talk about some shit I don't know about. So we got Tans today, who is a non-binary, uh, trans-masculine individual. Am I correct mm -hmm. in saying that? All right. And okay. they're going to just talk about their experience as a non-binary trans masculine individual. We're going to talk about culture today, how our culture can affect uh, transition and how our experiences differ from our white counterparts. So we're just going to jump right up into this, John. So I know you was talking about before. Oh, and actually, you can also follow Tans on Instagram, Barry Opulent. And I'll make sure yeah. I leave the link in the description so you can follow them. Hopefully, by the end of this conversation, uh, Tans over here will get a YouTube channel for y'all. <laughs> I'm throwing you under the bus hardcore. I see. Trying, trying, to, trying to give you some, some uh, what you gonna call it, some, um, how you say? Some fuel. Uh, some fuel some right there. Some yeah, okay. Uh, I'll uh, see. Tans got I'll some like good it. shit to talk about. <laughs> yeah, man. I think we all got some good shit to talk about, man. We all got experiences. I like, you know what I'm saying? And we don't have many, and we talked about this before too, even like off camera, like there's just not that many people of color in the trans community, at least that are vocal and out, outspoken to the community mm -hmm. that can share their experiences yeah. and, and, and kind of give us a voice in the community because unfortunately it seems like, not that it's a bad thing that our white counterparts have a platform and can talk and get a lot of stuff out there but our experience are so different right like even when we talked like what was it, a couple months ago when you were we were talking about top mm. surgery and yeah i was like yo as somebody as a person of color like even our nipples look different like the color no everything the everything. scars all that mm. yeah like the way our scars heal are different sometimes and we don't see that so much like i remember when i had top surgery and i was looking at like oh, before having top surgery and i was looking online like all right what can I expect for things to happen? And I was like, I couldn't find any people of color really on YouTube. It mm -hmm. seemed like it was mainly white transgender men. And it was like, okay, but my nipples aren't pink. And so when I had You're top right. surgery and my nipples were like pink, I was like, yo, something's wrong with my nipples, what's happening? <laughs> and then I realized, oh, right. this is kind of normal. They're gonna be a little pink and then they're gonna go back to the, that, that nice uh, Hershey kiss color. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah. so I think it's important that we have these conversations and we uplift other people of color in the community to share their voices, share their stories and talk so that yeah. we have a voice because we are a minority within a minority. Definitely. Yeah. And, and, and I just want to say thank you, Micah, for, for doing that, for, us, for, you know, creating this platform, for being a voice for us, you know what I'm saying? Because I am just, in my opinion, is is it's difficult to uh, to have a voice sometimes and being a person of color and being black, personally being a black person is is, is sometimes very difficult, especially being um, assigned female at birth and being trans masculine, being non-binary, presenting as masculine or however you want to call it. Um, it's, like it's so much into that. It feels like right. that's an even smaller minority within the minority, within a minority. This is like some inception shit. Yeah, like, like it, it gets deep. already don't see transgender mm -hmm. men or who are people of color online. And you really don't see non-binary people of color online either. So before we even get further into the conversation, can you talk a little bit about your non-binary experience, what that means to you so that people who are watching or listening to this on the podcast um, mm. know a little bit about what it means to be a non-binary trans masculine individual and how you present that and how that feels for you. Sure, yeah. So, um, and I'm gonna just be 100% with y'all. Uh, I'm, I'm just recently coming into that identity as a non-binary trans masculine person. You know what I'm saying? Before, and still, I, I would never like to subscribe to labels mm -hmm. and I think a big part of that is because I wasn't sure you know what I'm saying mm. 
about myself and 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 what I identified as. So, <clears throat> and in retrospect, thinking back, and whenever I refer to myself, you know, I'd be like, "Oh, you know what I'm, saying? I'm a grown ass man. I'm a grown ass woman." I would always just say I'm a grown ass motherfucking person. You know what I'm saying like <laughs> I would never say I'm a man or a woman because mm -hmm. I just you know I don't ooh, it's like what <laughs> and, yeah. um and then um coming up I came up with all boys all children all of my parents' children were assigned male birth and I was the only one assigned female birth yet I was not comfortable in the clothes that were supposed to be for my gender for females or whatever like and now thinking back like i had dysphoria as a as a child like uh my mom if my mom was right here right now she would tell you a story about how i cry and cry and cry because she put me in something i didn't want to wear and i couldn't even i didn't even have the the uh, vocabulary to express what was wrong and I just cried because I wasn't that comfortable in those clothes that she put me in. And it had, of course it happened more and more as I got older and I was able to express that or whatever. But now as a non-binary trans masculine person of color, um and 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 actually understanding what that is, uh it, it feels it feels good, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like that is if I had to label myself, that's what I would label myself. But I just like to go through life as tans. I just like to go through life as me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, pronouns don't don't really make me uncomfortable or whatever. If I'm referred to as she or he or they, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. But when people comment on my body, that is what makes me uncomfortable. Or if I don't feel comfortable in my clothes, that is what just makes me feel dysphoric. Mm -hmm. And um, just now that I'm really understanding myself and what these terms mean, non-binary, trans masculine, and transgender, and, and all, the, all of the terms that's under the umbrella of transgender um, is, is making me more comfortable but it's also making me uncomfortable because I realize how many people do not understand that the umbrella term of transgender or trans masculine or non-binary or trans feminine or a sign. It's so many things that people do not understand. And it makes me uncomfortable because it's like, on one hand, I wanna be able to help people understand that. But on the other hand, it's like, if you really care to understand, you could find a way to understand. You know what I'm saying it's 2021, like Google been around for how long? Ash, G's, Yahoo, all that shit. Like, if you really cared to understand, you you could, you know what I'm saying? So, well, I just want to interject on that real quick because even though, like, I understand that line of thinking of like, yo, there's Google, there's so many different ways you can understand. But like, it's like we said earlier, everybody has their own experience and the way that they experience their identity as a transgender person. Even if we took transgender out of it, we all kind mm -hmm. of, maybe collectively can relate on certain things, but we all have our own experiences. And so what I don't like about the whole Google thing and, and finding it is there's always going to be somebody who doesn't understand, but they're the ones that have the loudest voice. And that's the person that the person who doesn't understand is going to find. Because there are more people who got something negative to say about transgender individuals, about people of color, about non-binary, about trans masculine, about all these. There are so many more of those negative voices who really don't understand what it means to be transgender, don't understand the terminology, don't understand the psychology, don't understand anything around it. And they have the most opinions about it. Right. I understand the, that. You know what I mean? And that's what worries me is that's the person that people find. And then they yeah, I, go on thinking that's the right thing. Does that right. Mean? And that's that's why you that's why you have your platform. That's why you have your YouTube channel and your podcast, right? Yeah. That's yeah. why you invited me to talk to you to have this conversation. Yeah. And that's part of the reason why I am considering making a YouTube channel. And you, you eventually I will. <laughs> eventually I will because because of that, because exactly what you just said, there's not enough positive voices you know what i'm saying um but i think it's better personally 
it would be better for me to create that platform on YouTube to talk about my experience as a non-binary person, um, especially a non-binary person of color, a non-binary trans masculine person of color. I think it would be better for me to express and educate on a platform like YouTube as opposed to one-on-one -on -one with people. Because when you get one-on-one -on -one with people, sometimes they can they can try to corner you, you know what I'm saying? And 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 some kind sometimes like for lack of better better words, bully you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. And it's like, you know, they want to pull out the the Bible and they want to pull out the the old ass studies that came from, you know, before we was born and mm -hmm. and just shit like that. And um I feel like it's, a, it's an unfair playing ground, especially because a lot of times people will ask questions, but there's like hidden microaggressions behind it. You know what I'm saying? It's like they don't really they don't really care. They're just trying to poke at you, basically. You know what I mean? They don't really want to. And, um, they just want to talk. Right. Yeah. Right. That's so. That's my that's that's my problem with it. It's just like, and then like you said, um, people that have the loudest voice sometimes are the most negative, right? Mm -hmm. And then not only not only that, on the other hand, people that have the loudest voice are mostly not people of color they're the you know aesthetically pleasing the european the status quo for beauty standards and what it means to be transgender or even just androgynous or lesbian or gay you know what i'm saying all of the terms on the lgbtqi plus or whatever it's like if you go to each letter for each category and and pick the poster child for it, it's not gonna be anybody looking like you or I. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So do you think part of that is because of the innate like fear already as people of colors? Like we kind of we try so hard sometimes to fly under the radar. We try to kind of like fade into the background. We don't really want to be up front to because we don't want we're already crucified as it is in a lot of situations. It's like now add in LGBTQI plus on top mm -hmm. of that and like there goes another layer for you to get crucified under because like you said there's so many people that don't understand what it means to mm -hmm. be non-binary what it means to be um trans masculine what it means to be transgender transsexual whatever you want to call call it mm -hmm. um and there's already so much negative negativity as it is like kind of focused on all of those topics now add in a person of color who has their own struggles as a person of color coming into the conversation is like now it's like a double whammy so it's like a lot of people of color i feel like we try to like eh, i don't really yeah. want that smoke because we already got enough to deal with i don't really want that, that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I, I, mean? I cannot even sit here in front like i don't believe that i i definitely believe that because you know i mean i'm one of them people are. i'm that person of color that's my binary trans masculine that wants to just fly under the radar especially when I'm in an environment that is predominantly white and predominantly male, a sign, a cis male or whatever, like it's it's a it's an uncomfortable state, and you know I'm I am actually tired of not being able to just exist. You know what I'm saying? As people of color, black mm -hmm. people in general, must speak. You know, must speak mostly from being black. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's just difficult to exist in spaces that are non-black and non, you know, not not predominantly people of color. It's, it's just hard to just exist. And I experience it every night when I go to work, basically. One of my coworkers is like saying some old bullshit, some microaggressive, oh, uh, I heard that pop. Oh, I, I thought we were getting shot at. I was like, what? How, that's your reaction? To thinking that you're getting shot at, you just go, oh, I thought we were getting shot at. Nothing, you don't mash on the gas, nothing, you just. See, but that's also how you know, like, you come from a whole different world, because I tell you right now, you, I, I don't know where in Philly you live, but I've lived in some fucked up places throughout Pennsylvania and even, New, you know, from New York City. So I've lived in some fucked places. And when I hear somebody shooting, I'm out. 
I'm either oh, yeah, definitely. on the floor or in some instances, the, the, the fucking, uh, how you say, uh, the nosy Hispanic part of becomes uh, <laughs> window, you know, when it's one block, was going you know yeah. the one block where you're like trying to just, just a little bit, just so you could peek yeah. out and see what's going on, but you don't want to be seen and you don't really want to see anything, but you're just like, uh, let me make sure, yeah, like, no. <laughs> let me just make sure you're not getting my car. It is, it is right. Yeah. No, no, I, no. I, I understand what you're saying. Cause look, I know what gunshots sound like. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I know I know when I'm at work and we riding down Broad Street. If anybody watching from Philly, you know Broad Street, Broad and Gerard, you know what I'm saying? That's the hood. Uh, I, I know what gunshots sound like. So mm-hmm. if we ride over a bottle and it pops, I know it's not a gunshot. Yeah. And I know by my partner's reaction that he knows it's not a gunshot. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's that? I thought we were getting shot at. Like, really? If you were ever to really fear for your life, like that that we, for whatever reason, at work, minding our business was getting shot at. If that's your reaction, and I, I'm sorry, so you deserve to get shot. <laughs> you're, you're the last person I want to be. <laughs> okay, because like, what is, what's going on here? Like, and it's, it's shit like that, 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 upsets me because it's like if you feel that unsafe coming to work and my partner's from Jersey and a lot of people that I work with don't live from Philly and are not from Philly mm-hmm. if you're that fearful work in your city you know what I'm saying work where you come from don't mm-hmm. come here and you know you know that this is something that you gotta you gotta deal with the hood but my problem is back to where we started that is that anytime black people are just existing like we're just existing or people of color we're just existing we're just living <laughs> it's like oh my god i'm so scared i don't know what's we gonna just happen. out here yeah we just out here breathing you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying just like you know we just out here surviving that's what we doing for we're surviving yeah i mean we don't even get to live live we surviving you know what i'm saying and i know i know that i can um i can be empathetic to a Latino community because we have, you know, a big a Latino a neighborhood here in Philly and they call it Badlands or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And um it's, it's the hood, you know what I mean? Like I'm I can't speak to um all of the uh cultural differences between it's not many my, uh black culture. Yeah, I I, I could believe that, but I, 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 I don't I, say I that. Know that I don't say that like as if I know more than you about it. I just say like uh-huh. living in like I lived in, you know, Brooklyn, Queens. And then when I first moved to Pennsylvania, I lived in Lancaster for a, a okay. good amount of time. And it's just like predominantly black and Hispanic people. Mm-hmm. And my bro, one of my bros, like black, you know what I mean, and his. So like I was always like around him and his mom, like his family, like the culture is so similar in a lot of ways. And then even if you go back to our like Latin roots, a lot of it's African. <laughs> a lot of our roots is African. You talk like some of the right. food, some of the, the music, where it comes from. It's a lot of it's from Africa because you got to go back to where, like if you, even for talking specifically Puerto Ricans, if you go back to when Christopher Columbus first found Puerto Rico or not found it, but you know what I mean? You know, found Puerto Rico. You know, what did he do? He immediately fucking enslaved the puerto ricans that were there he brought one of the generals who was actually african brought them brought them over brought african slaves over to puerto rico as well to pick the sugar mm-hmm. cane and everything else and a lot of puerto ricans don't even know like the word taino was not even what we were called mm. we were actually we weren't called that we were called arawaks and when we t- when christopher columbus came and spoke predominantly english and spanish you know from from spain or whatever brought all those people over from from Europe came out and was like what like what are you like what do we call you and so the Arawaks that were there which were Indian said kept saying Taino 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 which means honest like loyal like we're trustworthy you can trust we're okay we're cool like everything's cool so Christopher Columbus was the one that gave us the title Taino but that really Mm. wasn't what we were called Mm. and so a lot of our culture comes from really you look at it from African culture yeah, because of the slaves that they brought. What do you think happens when 
or you enslave a group of people. <laughs> you mix culture. Hey, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's like Spanish wasn't Look. our native language. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. Ain't nobody gonna hear you though. <laughs> no, but Spanish wasn't our native language. You know, so it's yeah. funny when people get so upset and they tell like Puerto Ricans like speak Spanish, like speak English or whatever. Like, what are you talking about? You're Europe, you're, you're the Europeans. That's where Spain is, is in Europe. Y'all brought that language. Mm -hmm. Not us. <laughs> Ignorant. Don't even be knowing. Don't even be you know? knowing what they're talking about. So Ignorant. that so I, I feel you're saying, like in terms of like you look at it, you look at most like hood areas, right? And it's like, what do you mm -hmm. predominantly see? There's Hispanic and lot like his Latinos and and black people we're yeah, always the, like we're always together i mean you can look at um like the culture of like hip-hop and all that like hip-hop mm -hmm. was started from puerto ricans and black people in brooklyn that's mm -hmm. how hip-hop originated like this is not yeah, my opinion these facts. are facts yeah facts definitely big facts we come big we facts. come from each other we come from you we come from each other you got what i'm trying right. to say like yeah mm -hmm. sorry i went on a yeah, whole so i get very passionate no no i was good it was good it was good <laughs> i, I get very like passionate and we know it was some good information but um, like I said, I can empathize with the um discrimination and racism that Latinos experience. Um, because like I said, I mean, Badlands and Philly, it's, it's the hood. I mean, if uh if my white partner rode through there, they'd be the same way. Like Ryan Cooper and Gerard, which is predominantly black, they'd be the same. Oh, oh, oh we haven't shot it. Oh, like. Come on, well, let me man. ask you this oh, though yeah. now. Now I'm curious because I, I I'm curious to know if you ever felt this way. I'm actually more nervous driving through suburbs that are predominantly white people than I am through black and Hispanic or Latino communities. I feel more comfortable and in my like element around other people of color than I do around white people. Because here's the crazy thing: listen, where I live now and like where my mom lives, bro, like it's all like Caucasian people. There is only one other like Latin person that lives in the complex where I live. They're the only person that saves what's up to me. They're the only person that talks to me. Right? Where my mom lives, all white people. My mom's like, oh, like I don't even know what's worse, living here or in Brooklyn, or like, you know what I mean, living in Brooklyn. And then I said, why you say that? She was like, I just, I don't, it's just, they're always looking at you. They're always watching you. They're always wanting to know what you're doing and where you're going and what music you're playing and how loud are you. And, you know, all these things. And I said, Ma, I'd rather be in the hood because at least in the hood, I know, right? In the hood, I know everybody got a gun or got something. <laughs> I already know what to expect when I go to the hood. Yeah. I don't know who has what. These motherfuckers mm -hmm. got bazookas and fucking, <laughs> you know, grenade launchers. Grenade, grenades, right? Grenade launchers. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking gas masks and all that shit. <laughs> They're ready for the fucking apocalypse. Oh, for real, yo. But we kind of we kind of went all over there, but uh, back <laughs> no, to non-binary um, people. <laughs> yeah, back to non-binary people. But I do, I feel that I feel that okay, because um, before I got into electrical maintenance, I used to work as a uh, transport EMT, and we used to drive all over. And yo, I've seen some of the most beautiful properties I've ever seen in my life. Some neighborhoods I didn't know existed so close to where I live. And it's like, I was nervous there. I was like, oh shit, the fuck? Don't get lost in this motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Like, um, even when I go to uh, because I like to I like to drive, so I'll take a ride to Jersey or whatever, go to the super Walmart, because Walmart's here in Philly stuck. Mm -hmm. If you watch me from Philly, you know what I'm talking about. All the Walmarts here suck. Um, so I take I take a ride and it's like, damn. I'm so out of my element. There's just so many white people. This is, I mean, it's just so many white people here. And it's like, but this is where, and, and, it, and it hurts too, it stings. Cause it's like, this is where I can get the things that I really need and what I really want. If I go to Walmart in the hood where I'm from, there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. If I go to the supermarket in the hood where I'm from, there's nothing there. Like the produce sucks. That just the selection sucks. Everything sucks. So yeah, that that stings. It's just and like I said, I could I could definitely understand what you're saying. Yes, I feel more comfortable around the black people in the hood, even hoods that I'm not from, as opposed to out in the suburbs and shit. It's just it's it's crazy. But um, 
like you said, back to non-binary. <laughs> um, yeah, so my experience as non-binary is, I'm gonna say young, okay? I'm gonna say young and immature because I haven't uh, been identifying as non-binary for long. And, but what I will say though, is that it's, um, it's freeing though, it's liberating. Uh, because now I don't have to subscribe to a label that I don't feel comfortable with. And like I said earlier, I don't really like subscribing to labels. And that's probably because I never really understood or connected with those labels that were placed on me. You know what I mean? So uh, I think I mentioned before we started recording that I was like forced out of the closet when I came out as lesbian or whatever. And it's like, you know, I wasn't ready to come out because I really didn't understand what I was going through. You know what I'm saying? I understood what I was supposed to be doing through puberty or whatever. And I understood that I wasn't, like, it didn't feel natural to me. You know what I mean? So I never experienced uh, that heterosexual shit. And I mean, I was cool with that, but it was like, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? I had uh, uh, female cousins that were close to my age or whatever, and they were, you know, heterosexual and, and doing this that type of stuff. And I was like, well, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But it was just, it was damn near impossible <laughs> for me to do it just because it's just like, it's not, it didn't feel right. It wasn't right. It wasn't right because that's just not who I am. And it just wasn't in my nature. I wasn't born like that. So, now, being an adult and, and actually being able to educate myself and having a vocabulary to express how I feel on the inside and, and also on the outside, because like I said, I've always dressed or presented masculinely. And anytime that my, my um, parents wanted to put me in feminine, feminine clothes or uh, clothes that correlated with my assigned gender uh it, it didn't go well you know I would I would literally cry like I would I would as I got older I would I would sneak and I would I would steal my but my brother's clothes and they would be <laughs> three times too big for me but I would still you know wear them or whatever so now that I'm older it, it's freeing to just exist you know to just be me without having to say, you know, I'm a girl or I'm a boy. And it's like, I'm I'm not binary. I don't, it doesn't, neither one of those fit. I'm just me, I'm just Tans, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it, it's funny because so many times, you know, kids will say anything. Kids are the most honest motherfuckers in the world. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wish I could count on, on these hands how many times a child has asked me, if I was a girl or a boy. And I'm just, yeah, I'm just like, well, oh, I'm a girl. Cause I was supposed to say I'm a girl, but yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I'm not really a girl though. Well, I'm a girl, you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> it's just now I have the vocabulary to say, I'm neither, I'm non-binary. I, I don't fit into the gender norms. I don't fit into either one. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think some of the other terms, and as I learn more, I might have, I might feel more comfortable with different labels, like a uh, two spirit or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so my experience is not binary. Like I said, for the short time that I have, I have adopted this term or accepted the term and felt comfortable with it. It has been freeing. It has been freeing. It felt it, is, it feels very, very freeing, especially the more and more I get to talk about it and the more and more I get to express what it is that it means, what non-binary transnationally means to me. You know what I'm saying? And thank you again for the opportunity to express this. Of course. So now I, I got to ask this too. Like, do you feel like the trans masculine community has been accepting towards your gender expression? Because I've, I've talked to other, other non-binary people who feel like, the transgender community, more specifically, the trans masculine community, transgender men seem to have the most pushback for some reason towards non-binary 
people? Do you feel like you've experienced that? Not only felt the pushback from not having many people to relate to and there, you know, as, as a person of color, but also now not having anyone to relate to as an even smaller part of the transgender community. Uh, yeah, man. And Aside it, from it me, because like, I basically DM you all the time. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you the bro for real, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, aside from you, it's like, I ain't gonna hold you, you know what I'm saying? I, I was introduced to trans men back 10 years ago, 10 plus years ago, you know what I'm saying? Um, I had a close friend that was into the houses you know, I don't know if you're familiar with the ballroom scene or whatever, but they were part of a house and there were trans men in the house or whatever. And I met some of them. And at the time, you know, I wasn't, I didn't really understand what was going on. I did, but I didn't, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And then a term that I'm, I'm, uh, that I've recently gotten acquainted with is cognitive dissonance. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Was basically, you know, it's like dissociating from your reality, basically. Right. You yeah. know what's right, but you've been taught what's wrong. And mm-hmm. You believe what's wrong, even though you feel what's right. Yeah. And it's like, so I was experiencing some of that in retrospect. I didn't know then, but I was experiencing some of that when I met some trans men back in the day. And then my friend, was a sign female at birth that I was really close with um started to transition and they didn't they didn't express to me at all anything about them feeling dysphoric about them wanting to transition or anything it's like I felt some type of way about this because like we're so close why couldn't you you know tell me you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying about your experiences or whatever but um even when we were hanging out before they transition, they were used to like make me feel like my femininity was a problem. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And not that they were so more so much more masculine than I was, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Honestly. But it was just like I guess, you know, they knew, like I said, they didn't express to me that they felt like they wanted to transition or they felt like they were tra- a transgender person or anything like that. So um even way back then, it's like, you know, I experienced pushback just being at the time a lesbian, a stud, or mas- masculine presenting woman or whatever. Uh, I felt pushback then. And and now uh, I see it, I see it a lot. It's like even even when you do identify as non-binary, if you're not like masculine presenting or even on in either side of the binary is like it's pushback you know what i'm saying even mm-hmm. for uh trans feminine people yeah it's like if you're if you identify as trans feminine and you're not like hey girl it's like it's, it's pushback it's like how can you you know say that you're trans feminine and you're just like not you're yeah. not the the status quo for femininity mm-hmm. and it's like uh it's weird, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think it has a lot but, to do with insecurity, though. On that, I think it, I think non-binary threatens a lot of people. I think it threatens mm-hmm. people who are in such a binary way of thinking that it's like, wait a minute. So you're saying that you can exist outside of this binary or within the binary, maybe somewhere leaning one side more than the other, but now it threatens my binary because you're telling me that. I can't just go from one to the other or do this, this way that I'm doing it. Does that make sense? It threatens that yeah. whole notion that things are so black and white, I guess. Right. So, and then I think to piggyback off what you're saying with the black and white thing is like, there's no blueprint. You know what I'm saying? It's like, they had their mind set on, okay, this is what I'm going to do because I'm not comfortable in my sign female at birth body or my mm-hmm. sign male at birth body. Then I need to be like, us to smell yeah. and for whatever and then now we go into culture and now we can branch mm-hmm. off into co- different cultures right mm-hmm. now i need to be like this black male that i've seen when i was coming up or i need to be like this latino male or i need to be like this asian male or i need to be like this white male or this white female or latino female da, 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 so mm-hmm. on and so forth 
and when it's like exactly yeah exactly and then when you see a non-binary person of the same race that you identify with or of the same culture or whatever same background ethnicity and they're not like that but maybe they lean towards a certain way lean towards lean more towards what you present as or how you identify is like yeah then is that insecurity is like well damn you know what i'm saying um maybe excuse me i'm sorry maybe maybe that's something more like what i feel you know what i'm saying or maybe i'm not living in my truth because like i said i think i mentioned this off camera i didn't consider top surgery until i saw someone never quite right joint well um, all right go ahead back up you were saying that when um, you first even taught saw uh top surgery it was right right when i thought about getting top surgery it was like i i saw it on someone that identifies non-binary but didn't look nothing like me, mm-hmm. nothing at all. Like, so, like I said, I, I've experienced trans men uh, since like, like 10 years ago. I mean, yeah, at least 10 years ago. And um, top surgery, in, in my mind, mm-hmm. was only for trans men that were on HRT. So when I saw that person, they didn't look anything like me, identifying as non-binary and, and had top surgery already without HRT. It was like, what? Like, is this, this is possible? Like, is this a thing? Mm-hmm. Is this real? It's like, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like, like you said, the pushback within the community against, you know, uh, uh, female to male transgenders as opposed to female to non-binary transgenders it, it comes from I think it comes from from somewhere in there where it's like I didn't know that this was an option I didn't know that I had I didn't have to make a full commitment to transitioning you know what I'm saying I didn't know that I could live in my life the way that outside helped. of the binary Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The way that I felt more the most comfortable mm-hmm. without basically without subscribing to a label. I mean, mm-hmm. living outside the binary is, is not subscribing to a label, even though you, we have to, because like I don't know, it's what the world just needs to label everything. Mm-hmm. Um so I think that's where a lot of the pushback comes from because um I don't know if you're familiar with uh any web series or whatever but it's this web series here that's based in philly and uh i think it's what's it called not perceptions it's uh let's be real let's be real is the web series it's based here in philly <laughs> okay and if you if you get a chance check it out uh, i don't really care too much for the storyline but the production is good like it's really good so, um, but a character in a storyline is a lesbian, a stud, and I mean, they look, they look like a male, you know what I'm saying? They present masculine and super flat chested, make me jealous, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> uh, super flat chested, shortcut, just, you know, masculinely present masculine features. And is a sequence in the show where they're having an exchange with a trans man. So it's a stud, a lesbian stud, masculine presenting lesbian, having an exchange with a female to male transgender person. Mm-hmm. And I, I just, I don't know verbatim, but to sum it up, the exchange was something like, Oh, you mad because I don't need hormones that look like a man, like I'm real, da 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 And I was like, okay, like you hype, <laughs> like relax, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. everybody 
what I'm saying? Everybody's comfort comes in different ways. You know what I'm saying? Outside of being transgender, like mm-hmm. even with people just going to sleep. You mean yeah. some people like to sleep on their back, some people like to sleep on their stomach. Mm-hmm. Does like that make the effect? <laughs> like yeah, there you go. You get side sleeping. <laughs> like, does that make anybody sleep any less than you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. no. If any if people are living in their truth, let them live in their truth to how they how they need to and how they want to, how it's comfortable for them. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 I don't need anything that present like this. Good for you. And that's you. I don't got nothing to do with the next person. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that that's coming from the other way. That's coming from a lesbian, a masculine, a masculine presenting lesbian talking to a trans man, trying to belittle them mm-hmm. for, you know, needing to take further steps to feel comfortable in their skin. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that, that scene, even though it's fictional, it bothered me. Is, people say shit like that. People think exactly. that. Exactly. Right. It bothered me because it's like, you, you don't even know how many people are out here struggling with dysphoria and the way that they present and and how it doesn't correlate with the way that they actually feel inside but have no desire to actually like fully transition or be the opposite they just want to exist comfortably Mm -hmm. and um i i felt like that the um the script the dialect I mean the dialogue. It just is, is uh, I don't know, toxic. It's troublesome. But because it's a reflection, of our community. though. It's a reflection. It's definitely a reflection. It's definitely real. I can't say. <laughs> yo, I, I like from the groups that I be that I was in on Facebook, even sometimes within like people that I got to block from even the channel and stuff. Sometimes it's like. I hate that in the communities, even more so, it's, it happens more within our community than it does from people outside of our community. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I think that so often there's this narrative that's getting pushed, like, you have to be on hormones. That's what's going to make you happy. I think there's the, the problem is, even if we take transition out of it, the main problem, I think, comes from, I'll be happy when. Mm. You get what I'm saying? That mentality of I'll be happy when I have testosterone. Like that's going to be the fix. I'll be happy when I have top surgery. That's going to be the fix. I'll be happy when I pass or when I do this or when I do that. And so the goalpost keeps getting moved of when that person Mm. will be happy. And so since they can't get happy because the goalpost keeps moving, they just turn Mm. back and start talking shit on other people. Well, I should be happy because I did these things that you can't do or that you didn't do, Mm. or you should, or you have to do these things to be happy. You have to do these things to be as good as I am because it makes them feel better about who they are. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Like that's kind of where I feel like a lot of this shit comes from. And then, I mean, we have such this, like we were saying earlier, this binary way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Like if we're not doing it the exact same way as the next person, then maybe something's wrong. Right. Maybe something's yeah. wrong with me because I don't like in your situation, you were saying you don't feel the need to take hormones. That's fine. You don't, you don't need to feel that way. So then how, some people take that as a threat too. It's like, well, how come you don't need to take right. to feel okay with you, but I feel like I need to. Right, you know what because I mean? Because we're different. I mean, we're di- we're just wired differently. We're yeah. different people, and that's just. I mean, but everybody doesn't understand that, and I think that goes back to the cognitive cognitive dis- dissonance that I mentioned earlier. It's like, you know, we feel we feel one way, but we were taught that this is right, and then we think that because we feel this way, it's wrong because it's not. It doesn't reflect what we taught what we were taught that was right, and it's like that. Um, for instance, like I said, I, I met trans men back 10 years ago, or whatever, and before I was educated, before with so much knowledge about it or mm-hmm. uh, material about it to, to learn from out here, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, like I, like I said, I, cognitive dissonance. I thought it was wrong, even though, but I felt like, you know, I could relate. It was like, it was something there. Mm-hmm. But I was told otherwise. It's like, you know what I'm saying? So I was at a battle with myself that like made me stay away from that part of 
the community, even though I was exposed to it early on. That's, you know what that's called too? That's also called projection. Projection? Okay. Projection. So I saw so you brought up a perfect example of that. When I first came across what I'm not sure if this person is transgender now, um, but I'm talking now like 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember I was when I was in high school, there was this person that I knew who I was really, really good friends with and signed male at birth, you know, had long hair, dressed like a woman, mm-hmm. you know, dudes would, and we in the hood on top of that. So it was like horrible because dudes would try to fight, fight them mm-hmm. um, or fight them. And, and, you know, would try, some dudes would try to holler at them thinking, oh, this is a woman. And then we'll get mad, you know, all this other craziness. I remember I was like, this was like one of my best friends back in the day. And I remember being so mad at this person. I'm like, why you got to do all this extra shit? Like trying to look like a woman and sound like a woman and, but you saying you're not a woman, but you're saying that you kind of are. So, I mean, I, like I said, I haven't talked to this person in years, so I don't know if they're transgender or not, but I remember back then not knowing what was going on with me mm. and being so angry at the fact that this person, even regardless of all this pushback that they were getting yeah. from our community, being themselves, that's projection. So I eventually yeah. I stopped fucking with this person for reasons unrelated but I remember like going back to therapy and talking about this and I'm like and I remember my therapist asking me why are you so angry at this person I'm like why the fuck they being this way and I don't know like why I can't be that way or why I can't start doing my own thing so a lot of it sometimes in our community is projection we see Mm -hmm. other people doing the things that somewhere in our own mind we want to do but we're afraid to and I think it goes back to what you're saying too about seeing certain things and thinking is wrong. I think that also goes back to culture. Cause like I've had, like, I'm, I'm gonna pull that card, but I've had plenty of white friends, right. Mm-hmm. Who are f- female um, and not transgender or anything, but just female. And their upbringing was so different from mine. Right. In terms of like, you know, they go hunting, right. Like go hunting with their dads and shit like that. Dressing like, you know, being a tomboy, I'm just say tomboy. Hey. You know, like uh-huh. the standard of what they could do was different from right. yeah. me growing up, being assigned female at birth, being uh, socialized and raised as a female was different than how the boys were raised. Way different, yep. But like you said, seeing you seeing one thing, you're like, wait, or like, you know, say like lady or say like this, do this, be this way, be that way. And all these things. And it's like, but wait, what, like, that's not even how I feel. <laughs> Right. Yeah. You know, or that's yeah. not even how I think. Or like right. You know, right. we so, were taught. Yeah, or, but that's what you were taught. So part of you is like, well, this is what I was taught. Like I'm supposed to be this way, that way, and the third. And mm-hmm. I don't see that a lot in like at least the some of the women and even some of the men that I, you know, had become friends with growing as I became an adult, they're or as a teenager, like their upbringing was just completely different. Mm-hmm. No, they didn't really have it didn't seem like they really had the same kind of boundaries or yeah. restrictions you know as as i did growing up so i, I think right. that's kind of that's kind of interesting on how that that plays a part and i think that also plays a part too in some some of the ways of which i mean that's i, that, I think that'll be a whole nother video but like about with misogyny within the trans masculine mm-hmm. community because there is misogyny in the yeah. trans and ma- trans masculine community for sure, for sure, for sure. Oh, and, I, right. and I think part of that comes from the fact that, especially with people of color, I don't want to talk about white people because I'm I, I don't know that experience. But for people of color, like being raised a certain way, especially when you're socialized as a as a woman, some of that I think we internalize some of that, and I think that's why some of these transgender men we have now out here who pass and sound whatever come off as so hyper aggressive and it's almost like they they re, they denounce the femininity that we all have in us we all have masculinity mm-hmm. and femininity you know what i'm trying to say yeah 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 uh I, I i i totally agree with that because even in the lesbian community if you just take the l from the gbtqrs plus <laughs> it's misogyny within that <laughs> did you say qrs plus <laughs> A lot, I, could, a lot, I know it's, it's a lot of us you mean but the community yeah you take the l from the community it's misogyny within that you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. you got studs masculine presenting females whatever you want to call that are misogynistic and it's mm-hmm. crazy it's like 
or if you're a lesbian, if you identify as lesbian, I mean, it, well, it doesn't mean, but you know, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. It's like, yeah, yeah. You got you got women within the community that are misogynistic. Yeah. And that's just, it just is what it is. It's like it's fucked up, but it's it's happening. Yeah. And it begs the question, though, is it misogyny or is it sexism? Because those are two different things that we use, two different terms that we use so interchangeably, you know, because so like you think of misogyny, that's like you have this hate, this hate, mm-hmm. like prejudice towards women. Then you look at sexism and it's kind of like, is that the same thing? I got to Google it. I got to know because it's going to bother me. All right. Hey, I'm Googling. You know, but that's that's a good point though. That's definitely a good question. So let's yeah, let's get to the bottom of it. Okay, so sexism would be still prejudice, stereotyping, or discrimination typically against women on the basis of sex. Mm-hmm. Whereas misogyny is literally like a hate, dislike mm-hmm. or contempt for, or an ingrained prejudice against women. So, so I think they kind do of, overlap. Kind of, yeah, it's they kind overlap. of overlap there. Yeah. They overlap, yeah. I guess it's sexism would be, I guess, if you would look at you could say that was more towards men or women. It could be men or women. Like, oh, man, right, is right. To pay for something because he's a man. That would be sexist. So I, yeah. okay, they're kind of used interchangeably, but yeah, I would say misogyny. Definitely, I've seen that as well in the, um, you know, not that I ever really identified as a lesbian, but definitely when I uh, was presenting as a woman and dating women, mm-hmm. um, I could definitely see. I think, and this is gonna sound crazy, but I think for a long time I was more sexist as a woman than I am mm. as a man okay. and I think that <laughs> yeah hear me out hear me out so growing up right it was kind of expected like not expected but I would say you know in Hispanic cultures like women are typically the ones who cook and clean and I know that's all cultures right but like just specifically for Hispanic culture you know you typically see the woman as the matriarch you know she's mm. the one that you don't argue with her or nothing like that. Like she does have power and control in the household more so than you would see in other um, cultures. She does have power and control in the, in the household, but you know, again, she's still seen as she's got to cook. She's got to clean, got to take care of the kids, got to, you know, sit like a lady, do this, do that, like certain things, I guess. Right. And when I was dating women, I had kind of this mentality of like, aren't we supposed to be doing like certain things here? Does that make sense? Right. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, no, definitely. There was like this internal yes. thing of like, I'm supposed to right. be all did up and do gender, this and do that. Right. Gender, gender constructs, like yeah. you know saying we, we were socialized, like you said earlier, mm-hmm. socialized to do these things. And, and as soon as I started like presenting more masculine and transition, I felt more comfortable in mm. my masculinity and in my femininity that like, you know, some people say like, oh, some of my hand gestures are considered feminine, right? Or like uh, whatever. And it's like, I don't, it didn't bother me now. Like, and I still don't, I mean, I didn't really expect women to do stuff for me back then. And I don't now, but mm. I definitely had a higher expectation of myself back then than I do now in terms of, of how I'm supposed to act or how even women are supposed to act around me. Mm-hmm. If that yeah. makes sense. I feel like the more that I started to pass, the more I became comfortable in my skin, the more I could mm-hmm. kind of like detach from that thinking of women are supposed to do this and that. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I could, I could see that. Um, and I can definitely say as I mature, as I've gotten older, that I, I can kind of agree with what you're saying. Like getting more comfortable in your skin now is like, okay, well, we were taught about what women were supposed to do and how they're supposed to act or whatever. It's so different now. Mm-hmm. Um, I can actually say, I'm, I don't know if it was a year or two ago, we were at my cousin's house, my family and I. We were at my cousin's house. She has two kids and, you know, her husband or whatever. And um, he works, she doesn't. So basically, essentially, she's a stay-at-home mom. But she ain't that domestic. I'm going to just put it like that. Okay. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> my dad, who is her uncle, came and was like, oh, you need to do the dishes. Da, 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 da. And he just was going on and on and on. And then not only 
myself, but my brother also was like, well, look, you know, it's 2020 or 2019, whatever the year was. And they can watch dishes too. And then like everything don't go gotta fall on her because she she has the kids all day and the laundry and the dishes and the cooking and the shopping and the this and the that. It's and another it's like, <laughs> Right. It's, it's like all he do is he just go to work and then put his feet up. Mm-hmm. And not to say, not to uh, I don't know say it, whatever. He got a desk job. It's not a laborious job. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, okay, you putting your brain to work, but you're not putting your body through that. Mm-hmm. Carrying around two kids all day, going to the market, walking around, cleaning and cooking and shit. That's that's laborious. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So he can help, and he can wash a dish too. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, um, but that's something that, like I said, as I matured, I've I I've came to learn, right? Oh, because yeah, before sure. it was like. My grandma, she, you know, would, would prepare the meals and make sure everybody ate and made sure if uh, my grandpa wasn't home to eat, that he had food ready for him when he got there, his plate was made. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's something that's generational mm-hmm. as well as cultural. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because as we, as we grow and as times change, that same tradition, so to speak, is not passed down, at least in my culture. Mm-hmm. It has not been passed down because... Like I said, at least in my culture, shit has just changed. You know what I'm saying? Um, unfortunately, a lot of black men are either dead or in jail. So mm-hmm. everything falls on a black woman. Cooking, cleaning, even working, taking care of the kids, all of that. So it's like, how can you expect for that same black woman after all these generations to only be in that that matriarch position where they are to not serve but nurture you know what i'm saying nurture and uh teach nurture and serve nurture serve teach yeah and um i think nurture is the best word you know nurture and uh nourish they can't only do that now. Now they need to nurture, nourish, and provide, and protect. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's just because of the, you know, the um, the deficit of black men because of jail and and death. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And um, it's sad, but that's just what what it is right now. You know what I'm saying? The traditions have changed. Yeah. And it's like because traditions have changed my way of thinking has changed. So before when I had my first girlfriend back 15 years ago, yeah, of course it was like, well, I'm the masculine one, so I should be doing this, I should hold the doors, I should pick up the tab, I should do this. But now as I've gotten older and I've seen how being a man, <laughs> I, I don't even know how to say this, but just so, I'm not saying being a man, but basically having the genitalia of a man doesn't really, it does, it's not really weighted as far as um, traditions go. The mass. As far as providing, character. you know what I'm saying? It's like, character traits. Exactly. It's like, it doesn't, it doesn't really correlate anymore. Mm-hmm. So uh, that has I, helped me to. I would say for me, though, it's a little different. Like tradition is definitely culture is definitely important to me. Um, Tradition is something that's definitely been passed down. Like, um, are there bad things in my culture? For sure. There is definitely this machismo, you know, this macho man uh, thing in in my culture. But there's also, um, at least for, I'll say for my family specifically, like, you know, I am... (sighs) It definitely, and now I'm also talking like as a married man, um, I would mm. say that the way I look at things are a little different. You know, I saw, it's important to see what your parents do, right? Mm. What your parents do and what they don't do, all those things is going to play a part in who you become as an adult, right? So like my, you know, my mom always loved cooking, you know, mm. that was like the way food is very important for us. That's something that's like how you show you love someone, how you nurture someone. Um, granted my father cooked too, though, you know what I mean? Like 
if my mom was not working, then she was home with all four of us cooking, mm-hmm. cleaning, you know, paying bills. I mean, I saw my mom, like my dad would come home from work and literally like he used to work in other states and stuff. And like, so like in like Michigan, like all these other places. So we wouldn't see him sometimes for, you know, days at a time until the weekend. And he would come home with his check, you know, paper check back then. And he would come home with his check. He would sign the check. My mom would take that check, go cash it, pay bills, take money for herself as her allowance. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And cook and clean and everything else and rinse, wash, repeat. And then when my dad wasn't working, and my mom was working, my dad was cooking, cleaning, and making sure everybody was good. You know what I mean? So now, and so now, like, being a man, being an adult man, and being a married man, I still take a lot of those values with me. Like, if I'm, if I'm home, if I'm not working, I'm not doing something, I'm cooking, cleaning, taking care of the house, and taking, making sure my wife is straight. If Mm. I'm working, and she's not working, I expect the same. And it's not a, it's not a, a sexist thing or a misogynist thing is it's a partnership thing and like we need to pick up the slack from each other you know what I mean right I will yeah. definitely say that from seeing the way that my father was being a hard-working person being a that that protector provider all those things you know definitely shaped my masculinity now as a man that I'm I want to be like him. that's who I aspire to be like I want to make mm-hmm. sure that I provide for you I, you should have a choice if you want to work Right. You know what I'm saying like, so I am yeah. on that way. It's like, if you want to stay home and just do whatever at the crib, like, cool. Like, but it's my job to make sure you have a choice. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, no, I definitely uh, understand what you're saying, especially because I, it's like this for me. So, so we got cultural difference, even though we both people of color, right? You Latino, mm-hmm. you know, I'm black or yeah. African American or whatever. We still have some cultural differences, even though we have cultural similarities, right? Mm-hmm. I totally agree with what you're saying, as far as and, it, and it's kind of it's kind of basically the same thing. Like you said, if you're a married man, right? So if you're working, you know what I'm saying then your wife is is contributing some other type of way, with mm-hmm. the basic cooking, cleaning, making sure yeah, yeah, like, cool. yeah, and vice versa, yeah. And I feel like that's just common sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's just like how shit works. Yeah. You know and nobody is gonna bring a hundred percent of everything all the time. Mm-hmm. Everybody, somebody's gonna bring a percentage of this and a percentage of that. You know what I'm saying? And that's how shit works. It's like okay, this is why we're together is because we're able to work together and put put together the puzzle pieces so that we're a whole. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, I think that being black and in our culture there's like a, a disconnect and there was a whole time where you know black men were just targeted so it's like you know we lost a lot of that tradition and a lot of that um working together right a lot of that black family basically yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's been broken down. You know what I'm saying? It's been yeah. ordered down and it's just fucked up for a long time. Yeah. So now it's like stuff that makes sense. Don't make it, sense it, no it, more. It, 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 exactly. It's, 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 it's fucked up. But, but what you're saying, it, it, it makes sense. I feel like it's common sense. But at the same time, like you say shit like that and then people would still label that sexist. Like I had made the comment about my wife, right? Like she... Again, our food is a big thing. You know this, even in black culture, food is a big thing, uh-huh. right? So it's like, you know, collard greens and, and, and fucking cornbread, all that shit, which uh, cornbread is so good. But anyway, cornbread, like the, the pork, food is, cotton, all that shit. it's all like, it's a, it's a big thing. So uh-huh. like, even if a, a, your wife or a woman wants to do those things that she wants to cook, because it's a part of culture, it's a part of that, right? a part of tradition is that she should cook for you or that she should or Mm -hmm. like not that she should but I mean that is kind of a part of it they do kind of say like women should do those things which I don't agree necessarily with that stance that they should do anything nobody has to do anything um but like even just saying like you know she you know why can't if she's cooking doesn't it make sense that if she's cooking that she would be serving my plate first 
Cause she's already, any chef, you know, do they serve themselves first? Nah, I mean, <laughs> even when, when I cook, if I cook for like me and my brother, let me give it now. I mean, yeah. and same thing, but it's the same thing though. So I, I work nights. So when I get home from work, he's usually getting up for work and he's working from home or whatever because of the panty. So if he gets in, gets downstairs and settled and everything before I get in the house and get settled, he'll start, you know, making eggs. If you want some eggs or whatever, you want some eggs yeah, yeah. Toast or whatever he's cooking. Yeah. And when he finished, boom, he's giving me my plate before he eats. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, it makes sense. If you're cooking, mm -hmm. you're not going to let the rest of the food get cold while yeah. you're eating. Yeah, yeah. That just don't make sense. Like, that's just common sense right there. Yeah. And it just so happens that because of tradition mm -hmm. and because of being a matriarch, you know what I'm saying, the woman is, is in the kitchen chefing it up, making it, you I mean, making the shit taste good, filling the bellies. Yeah. That, you know, she would serve as well. Yeah. Okay. That just makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's like, but we got that, you know, in Black culture too, because my grandma, like I said, and um, it's just funny because over the years, I've seen how it's changed, how her tradition has changed, how her outlook has changed because financially, you know, my grandpa, you know, he's getting money, but managing it. And that's another thing. I don't know if you, you, if you experience this in your culture too, but in black culture, we're told to make money, get it, get the, get the bag, make the money, you mean, take the pockets, da, 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 da. We're never taught how to manage it. Oh, no, I agree with that. Okay. That's, for, that's when my father died, right. we, we couldn't even pay for his funeral. Right. Because, so that, that's, I mean, granted, I was very young when my father died, but, you know, that's definitely, I agree with that 100%. It's in, in our call, and people of color is like, we're not taught how to manage our money. And I think a big part of that is like, we just kind of have this thing like, we're going to die and we're probably going to die young anyway. So just like, mm. And not even just that, it's like, if you're already living paycheck to paycheck and you got a family of four or five, you know, seven, mm -hmm. what money do you have to invest? You know what I mean? What money? Like, I remember like my mom didn't really know about credit. Like my mom came uh, or my dad came from Puerto Rico and stuff like that and moved to New York or whatever. And all those things, like they didn't really know. Like you said, my grandma, my grand, my grandpa, like hustlers, like my grandma is like in her eighties. Like to this day, she's still hustling. She she owns two fucking botanicas in New York city, like bodegas. Mm -hmm. Basically she still owns the owns them still working. My grandpa, he's still working. He's in his eighties. And there's another thing. They don't even live together. They hate each other, but they love each other. It's the weirdest thing. Bro. Like, yo, my grandparents too. Yo, like, I swear to God. Like the, but one thing I, I, I think is so important, like kind of to correlate this to our trans identity is too, is like, what are you learning from your family? What did they teach right. you? What did you learn from the men in your family? So like, if you were, you as a trans masculine individual, you were talking about like not really having your pops or like, you know what I mean? Like not having the black man or having that masculine energy there, that masculinity there. Mm. You're going to look to other things to figure that out. You know yeah, what I mean? Well, I, yeah, well, yeah, I wasn't speaking personally about, uh, Oh, I know and you were I'm saying yeah. about like I was saying, yeah, other people, and, yeah, and yeah, culture, yeah. Yeah, yeah other people black yeah. men are is, is a disparity of black men, yeah. But I um but yeah, my pops is around, but my, my relationship with my father is not that strong. Like my bond, I have a stronger bond with my mother than I do with my father. And it's weird, you know what I'm saying? He can masculine present person trans masculine or whatever you think I would be more bonded with my father. I'm not really more binded with my mother. And I don't, I didn't assume that you would be binded more with your, per I said, if you were more of a trans masculine person, and I'm speaking more from the perspective of transgender men who are trying to, cause you look at it to some degree, you are trying to emulate what you see. Like you said earlier, right? like you said earlier, when you didn't even realize the top surgery was a thing that you could do without hormone replacement was, yeah, hormone, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so you saw someone that had mm -hmm. that, like, wait a minute, that's a possibility. Right. So my point is, is like, I notice a lot in, in the trans specifically for transgender men. I don't want to talk about non-binary people because I'm not, and I'm not so involved with like, you're like the only non-binary person that I fuck with and that I talk to. Mm -hmm. So like yeah. outside of that is like, I've noticed so many trans men who are this hyper masculine, right. That mm -hmm. are trying so hard to yeah. be masculine. Right. right um, 
kind of deny their femininity because we all have that. Um, right, yeah. sometimes are just walking through the world like mad confused especially when I talk to people of color this is something I see consistently when I talk more to um white transgender men it's they and they're just able to kind of fade in the background they can just be men and they kind of fade in the background but then you talk to, I've talked to people of color who are transgender men or trans masculine individuals I see they struggle so much and I notice across the board a lot of them that I've spoken to don't really have a relationship with their pops Either mm. you said Pops is dead, Pops is in jail, or Pops don't have a relationship. Ain't around, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or not around. And yeah. that affects who we become because it's like, okay, I don't have something to look at to emulate. So now yeah. they're going off of each other, other trans masculine mm. people in the community who are doing the same thing. Or the white right. transgender or white transgender men who we don't have a relation that much. we're not relatable that much we're, right. yeah, we're relatable, but our experiences are still somewhat different right the only thing that you're relatable is the fact that you're trans right and that you're experiencing some kind of you know experience in trans life but other I mean, than that more than that because as, as, even if we take color and trans and all that apart like we can still try to relate to some other humanistic um you know, thing, you know what I mean? Like there's still something we can try to relate on as humans. Um, but at the same time, it's just like our experience is the way we walk through the world is just different. Like you were saying, like, you know, and I'm sure there are still even white people who are watching this or who will watch this, who will say like, oh, I saw that in my family. Right. And, you know, so like, I just want to say, this is not, we're not excluding anybody, but there's already a big market of trans masculine people who are white that you can look at and talk about. And it's like, we don't have this people of color don't have this, these conversations. Mm. You know, right. how we can better not only our community as people of color, but even like within the trans community, how do we better that? Like, how do we uplift each other? How do we better each other? How do we, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, how do we get to that? Yeah, I, I do know what you're saying, because like I said, like, I know, I know, other, I know trans men and um, I just, yeah, I live like trans men. And I, and I, I, I want for them, you know what I'm saying? I, I want to see them prosper. I want to see them do well. But it's like, it's so many things, so many ob obstacles that are stacked up against people of color. And it's like, then, like I said, a minority inside a minority. It's like, it, it, it stings, it hurts mm -hmm. to see the struggle. And um, like I mentioned earlier, we both mentioned me potentially starting a YouTube and you know, my focus would be to educate and, and show other non-binary and trans, masculine and trans, trans men, you know, ways to lift their self up and persevere through all their struggles, mm -hmm. um, being transgender and being a minority, a person of color. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a deep thing. And like you, like, we went on a tangent or whatever, but that 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 hyper masculinity, I think it does a lot of times come from not having that father figure or not having a positive father father figure. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because like like I said, my dad's around, but I wouldn't say that he was the most positive father father figure, you know what I'm saying? Because like I said, I have a, a son, you know, they birth brothers or siblings. And um they're good guys, they're all good guys. I think my dad is a good guy. My grandfather, my brothers, they're all good men. But they have some some fucked up shit about them, especially when it comes to women. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And um uh I I can't I can't rightfully say why that is, but I can say that it's it's a learned behavior, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even if it wasn't taught, it was still a learned behavior. Yeah. Um, and that's like you said that uh, trans men and tra trans masculine people learn that hyper masculinity from other trans men and other trans masculine people because they're trying to emulate what they believe to be masculinity mm -hmm. from wherever they see it from. If it's from their father figure, their actual father, TV, or whatever the case may be, as opposed to um, our white counterparts in the trans community, the trans masculine community and non-binary, um, 
even if they don't have father figures, they've got other trans men to look at. Right. And they just, they just come up differently, just mm -hmm. way differently. And even in the cis, cis het community is like, they just come up differently. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of things that as people of color, even heterosexual people of color were labeled as gay is not gay in their community. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, they get to express their femininity without being crucified and being gay. You know what I mean? It's like, so it's just, it's just a different experience altogether. And that's why they tend not to be, excuse me, they tend not to be so hyper-masculine. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's crazy. But that's, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that before you said it. Think mm. about how how not how un uh or hypo rather hypo masculine i don't say hypo masculine but just yeah not hyper masculine that um non non people of color non trans you know what i'm saying yeah white, yeah. white trans men and trans masculine people are and not as hyper masculine as we're the only ones that color. feel like we have to Every, right. every, every white trans, and again, this is not a slight towards you guys. I'm, we're just talking specifically right now to people of color who experience this. But, you know, every white trans man that I have spoken with personally that I, you know, coach or, you know what I mean, try to have a conversation with, try to help out whatever way I can. If, this is never a conversation about how do I be more masculine? How do I... Mm. How do I pass more? I mean, pass more might be a, that's kind of a question. How do I pass more? But um, it's never like, how do I be more masculine? How do mm -hmm. I, um, yeah, this is usually how I be more masculine. And that's never a question, but like the people of color that I talk to and that are trans masculine or trans men are always asking me, how do I be more masculine? How do I, um, present more masculine even though i pass but how do i be more manly mm. just be who you are like that's it like you know you don't you don't have to try if you you shouldn't have to force yourself to be any type of way you know what i mean but like you said we have these and a lot of that too in the in the people with people color, of people of color a lot of that is homophobia but a lot of that too is just nitpicking at everything that we do mm. so we nitpick mm -hmm. at everything that we do do i sound too right. no Right. Like when I'm at work, like you were saying that you had brought up earlier about work. I'm, well, I think we talked about this off camera about code switching. Yeah. Yeah. We did. Yeah. I don't do that shit either. But at work, I'm like, there's only me and one other person that, like, which is my best friend, actually. We work together and mm. we're the only people of color nice. in the entire company. Mm. An entire company. So, naturally like just you know the environment that i came from and you know the way that i was raised and stuff, i'm loud as shit mm. i don't really like like y'all was telling you earlier like i'm naturally like an introverted person but when i'm around people i i open like i open up like i can talk i can do whatever i can do all those things right but like i'm naturally a loud person and everybody takes that as aggression mm. yeah right? so you know, I curse, I, you know, I have, you know, like you said, we talk, we have slang, the way that we talk is a little yeah. different, whatever the case may be. And so I could be on the phone with my dispatcher and I could be like, oh man, fuck this, you know, or whatever, like, yo, you wilding right now. Like, why are you talking? Like, why are you telling me to do that? That's mad dumb. Like, that don't even make no fucking sense or whatever. And like, this makes more sense, but like, I'm just having a normal conversation. Right. You know, regular, like, regular. Micah, why you sound so angry? Why are you upset with me? Please don't be upset with me. I'm like, I'm not. I'm chilling. Like, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just regular. I'm just talking. Like, what do you mean? And so it's like, I'm, I say that it's like, it, there's that nitpicking. So I'm, so you got to always be conscious of like, okay, do I sound too aggressive? Do I sound too loud? Do I sound too ghetto? Do I sound too this? Do I sound too that? Do I look like this? Do I look? And so then you add that now compile that with transitioning. And it's like, okay, do I look too feminine? Do I sound too feminine? Am I not perceived as macho enough or manly enough? Uh, do I sound this way? Is like we're nitpicked for everything. And so we internalize all this nitpicking and start nitpicking ourselves. And one mm -hmm. and constantly on edge and wondering how other people are perceiving us. Yeah, yeah. And you know what I'm trying to say? I definitely know what you're trying to say because I think, I think we talked about this off camera as well earlier that in my, in my job field that 
is predominantly white and predominantly cis male, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that when I first started and that feel that I felt some type of way when they basically interjected in anything. If I had an idea, if I was trying to turn a wrench, anything, like if I was trying to pick up a 50 pound pad, so anything is like, you know, oh no, 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 don't do that. And it's like now, sometimes, even recently, I, uh, I've been wearing a, little, a lot of overtime recently. I think last week I worked a date shift and I worked with this old man, uh, 60 something. And he's not even well, he's not even well. He like beat cancer two times and had a part of his lung removed and shit. And he's like, for lack of a better word, dying, right? And he wants to die at the job. And- um, Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's, you know, I feel bad for him. It's like, but this is what he was it's like, you know what I'm saying? I just <laughs> pray that I don't have to give him CPR on shift. It's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but- Don't die when I'm here. Don't, don't die around me, please, Jesus Christ. <laughs> But, um, so, you know, uh, we have circuit breakers, just like you got in your house, right? Mm -hmm. But way bigger. I mean, it breaks the circuit to sign. We got circuit breakers that could be the size of like a mini fridge. And the way that they are operated or taken in and out is that they, they rack in it, they rack in by like a worm mechanism. So as the worm spins, the breakers pull in or pushed out. Okay. <laughs> so he was struggling to rake the breaker out. And when I came to give him assistance, he told me to stop. And he was like, stop, stop, stop don't do that. And I was like, what, what's the problem? And he's like, there's something wrong with it. Da, 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 da. And I'm just like, you just don't want me to rake it out because I'm a chick. I'm saying like, you don't want me to have more strength than you. Mm -hmm. And I would say like three years ago, it really would have bothered me. But now it's like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, I have a side fever at birth, but like that don't make me feel, I don't know. Less than. Womanly or prissy or yeah, less than or like, I don't feel like like the female that they're trying to make me out to be. I don't make I don't feel like the damsel in distress that they try to make me out to be. I don't feel like the weaker human like they try to make me feel out to be. I feel like they're idiots because we get paid the same amount of money and <laughs> they want me to do less work. It's like, okay, fine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's still funny. I get paid by the hour. It's okay. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I'm going to just chill. I'm going to make you chill. I'm chill. You ain't going to hear no, no complaints out of me. You know what I mean? But I know, I know what I'm capable of. I know what I can do. You know what I mean? And it's not even about being masculine or feminine. It's just being, it's just about being capable mm. in my eyes. You know what I'm saying? But I know in their eyes, it's different. But, you know, now, like I said, a few years ago, yes, it, it got on my nerves so bad. But now, okay I'm still getting paid you know I mean? and I'm still me I'm still teens mm -hmm. you know what I mean like I don't feel like I never feel this forward at work unless I gotta like jump or something and my chest is moving around like I don't ever feel yeah um mm -hmm. excuse me but as opposed to a few years ago when I started I started as a temp and we was doing this big job He's in a lot of power tools. He's up in bucket trucks and stuff. And I had these big ass wrenches, two wrenches that I had, I had to manually tighten a bolt and a nut. And it was like this fucking big, right? I was doing cross beams. And the, um, the uh, director of the department came over and was like, uh, where's the impact going? Uh, she doesn't have enough strength to muscle those, those. That shit made me feel some type of way. It's like, oh, I can get this shit done. Like, you know what I mean? As a felt like you had something to prove. Yeah. Oh, when I first started at this at this job, I always had something to prove. Um, but now, 
I don't feel like that no more. I'm me. I know what I'm capable of. That's that. And for whatever reason, I may be able to perform better than some men, some assigned male at birth people, you know what I mean? For whatever reason. And I know that. And I'm okay with me knowing that, even if they don't know that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's personal. It's, it's for me. You know it's what I mean? Them. And it's not for them. And my paycheck is not for them. And yeah. like I said, I get the same amount of money, regardless if they want me to turn around or not. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm cool on that. You know what I mean? Well, on that yeah. note, I think that was, uh, I think we can leave it on, leave it at that. Leave it at that. That's cool. I like at that. that. We, we, we all have to probably do a follow up because I feel like we could just talk for hours. I feel like that's it. We love y'all. Go follow Tans. Very opulent. Very opulent. Instagram. I'm going to leave the link in the description. Uh-huh. And we out. That's it.